dietary intake of advanced glycation end products, also known as age products, impact insulin resistance, inflammation, and lifespan. Although I'd like to jump right into the data, it's important to first define uh, how they're formed and where they're found in food. So first, in looking at the simplified cartoon here, uh, we can see that starting from uh, bread, when you heat bread for uh, uh, some period of time, that forms the, you know, the brown, the crisp, and um, uh, of the molecules that are found in the brown and the crisp are age products, uh, amongst other molecules. But some of the molecules that are, or metabolites that are found in there are age products. So two of the age products that are found uh, or formed during the browning process, uh, I've, I've shown them here. So N6 carboxymethylysine, also known as CML, and methylglyoxal. So I'm going to talk about those two age products a lot uh, as I go through this uh, video. So where is uh, where are age products found uh, in the diet? So um, this is uh, CML content, so again, carboxymethylysine uh, in, a, in a few different foods, and just uh, illustrating how uh, uh, cooking foods at a high uh, temperature higher than 100 degrees Celsius, 200 degrees, 212 uh, degrees Fahrenheit, uh, so anything higher than boiling temperature will create uh, more age products. So just looking first at raw cashews, we see the CML content, uh, 6730 kilounits per 100 grams of cashews, but then roasting, there's a greater formation of age products, around 3,000 um, uh, units. Now, it isn't just cashews that uh, have this issue. So uh, roasting sunflower seeds, we see also around a 2,000 unit increase in CML content uh, because of roasting. But then going to something like beef, beef has a uh, relatively lower uh, CML uh, content when it's raw. But when you broil it, grill it, or pan fry, we can see a, a, a dramatic increase, you know, from tenfold for, for broiling and grilling to 14-fold increase in age product CML content uh, for beef. Now, I'm not uh, using this data to, to, to demonize beef, just to illustrate that there may be healthier ways to prepare it if your goal is to reduce age product uh, content. So one way is by stewing the beef. So cooking it at a lower temperature for a longer period of time, we can see that stewing beef has about a three-fold less uh, age product content compared with broiling and grilling around a four to five fold less than pan frying and only a you know about a three and a half fold increase compared to raw so stewing may be better in terms of age product uh, content so I haven't shown you why age products are important so let's have a look at that data in terms of uh, age products and their impact on health and lifespan so first reducing age product dietary age products increases lifespan in male C57 black 6J mice. Now, there's no data for females. This is the uh, data that exists. Uh, so first, um, they fed uh, mice um, uh, a regular age product, uh, a regular diet containing normal amounts of age products, and then a lower age product doc diet that they uh, made by heating the uh, animal pellet at a lower temperature. So uh, first, we can see that the uh, macronutrient composition of both diets are, are the same. So it, any effects we would see would not be because of macronutrient composition. However, you can obviously see that the age product content is half in the low age diet. So what effect did, the, did eating the low age diet have on lifespan? So here we're looking at uh, survival. So this is a survival curve plotted on the y-axis uh, against um, age in weeks on the x-axis. So um, when comparing the 50% uh, survival, which they've already highlighted uh, for me with the black line, uh, we can see that eating the low age diet increased lifespan uh, as indicated by the arrow. Both average and maximal lifespan compared to the regular age diet. So an obvious question when seeing these data is, well, did the mice eat less food on the low age diet? And that would basically in, you know, induce a calorie restriction, which could explain this lifespan extending effect uh, of the quote unquote low age uh, diet. So they measured, measured that. And uh, first we can see in the inset of this uh, figure here that food intake between the two groups was not different. So the lifespan extending effect of the low age diet was not related to uh, uh, eating less food. Uh, also interestingly though, in the bigger picture, the body weight uh, plotted uh, on the y-axis against age, uh, we can see that the body weight for the low age diet fed mice in the uh, black triangles was lower, albeit not statistically significant, was lower than the regular age diet for the majority of the study uh, and then finally became statistically significant starting at 96 weeks on the diet. So this data would suggest that eating the low age diet <laughs> increased uh, improved uh, metabolism. So the uh, their metabolism is more efficient. So they're because they're not eating less food, they're eating the same amount of food, but they have a lower body weight, su which suggests more efficient uh, utilization of nutrients, uh, so that they're not uh, carrying more body fat because of an inefficient metabolism. 
All right, so that's the effect of a low-age diet on lifespan, uh, an extension of lifespan on the low-age diet. What's the effect of a high-age diet plus calorie restriction, which is the gold standard of lifespan extension? So uh, first, in looking at the diets between the three groups, uh, so we have the regular diet, a CR diet, and then a CR diet fed a high amount of age products, which they heated the mouse pellet for longer, uh, resulting in more uh, uh, age products in the uh, mouse food. So uh, before we go into that, uh, first it's important to note that the macronutrient composition of the three diets between these three different groups, regular CR and CR high, was not different. So protein, fat, carbs, and calories, all the same between the diets. And uh, also, uh, the CML and uh, methylglyoxal, uh, MG, the two age products that they quantified, was similar between the regular and the CR groups. So basically, the food is the same for the regular and CR groups, but the CR animals are eating less. In this case, 40% less. So you can see food intake grams per day, where the CR groups were eating three grams a day, versus the regular group, which uh, were eating five grams a day, so that's a 40% CR. Now, correspondingly, because the CR mice were eating less food, they were also eating less age products, as, as shown here with the CML and, and methylglyoxal, MG. So the CR mice, because they were eating less food, they were also eating less age products. So to account for that, the uh, authors of this study created a high age product diet that were fed to mice that were calorie restricted. And that's what we, see, we can see there. So the, um, although the macronutrient composition of the diets between these three groups was similar, they uh, heated the pellet longer for the CR high age product fed mice so that it had a higher amount of CML and MG, and uh, there, thereby resulting, as shown in the lower uh, data, thereby resulting in about a two and a half fold increase in CML, daily CML intake for CR high age products versus just CR, and also an increase of about 55% for the high age product CR group versus regular CR. So what effect did eating more age products have for calorie restriction when compared with the regular CR diet? So here are the lifespan curves, or survival, sorry. Uh, so cumulative survival in the y-axis plotted against age. So first, in looking at the average uh, lifespan, we can see that obviously CR, as well known, increased lifespan um, uh, from about 100 weeks uh, average to uh, around 120, and also increased the maximum lifespan too, from about 110 to 130 uh, weeks. So, what effect did the uh, high CR, high age product plus CR uh, uh, group have with lifespan? So, um, that data is indicated by the gray circles, and we can see that eating more age products but the same amount of food on a CR diet shortened lifespan. So, when considering that a, a low age diet increases lifespan and a high age product diet plus CR will shorten lifespan, this suggested that uh, dietary age product intake is a va very powerful uh, uh, effector of lifespan. So what about insulin res resistance and inflammation? So, um, so first we're looking at the uh, data for insulin levels in 24 month old mice that were fed uh, a high or a low age product diet for their uh, lifespan. So uh, as we can see the insulin levels in the low age product diet had about half the insulin levels. And I didn't show you the glucose levels, which weren't different between the groups. But one measure of insulin sensitivity is the HOMA IR index, which is essentially a multiplication of insulin times glucose. And although the authors didn't evaluate if that was statistically significant in the study or not, because they reported the data for insulin and glucose, we can see that the mice on the regular age product diet had a HOMA IR of 20, uh, you know, 23.7, which is uh, more than double the uh, HOMA IR, IR value of the low age product diet, which uh, suggests that <clears throat> the animals on the low age product diet were more insulin sensitive relative to the regular age diet group. All right, so what is the, uh, what's the effect of uh, dietary age products on inflammation? So here we're looking at the effect of uh, a high age product diet or a low age product diet on TNF alpha on the y axis in picograms per milliliter. As, a, as one indicator of inflammation. And again, this data is, both these data are in mice. So regardless if the mice were on a high fat diet, HF, or on a low fat diet, LF, we can see that animals that were fed the low age product diet were, had, had lower inflammation as indicated by lower TNF alpha. So um, everything I've shown you so far is in mice. Uh, is there similar data similar data in humans? I mean, it's nice to have animal studies, but we want to know if this stuff is going to impact health and, and disease risk and lifespan in humans. So there's a meta-analysis meta of uh, randomized controlled trials, RCTs, where they compared a low-age product diet versus high. So 
This is an intervention. They, this isn't an association. So in five studies uh, uh, it's, uh, that, that reported HOMA IR values, eating a low age product diet decreased HOMA IR. So eating less age products, more insulin sensitive. In six studies that fed a low age or a high age product diet, the low age product diet was uh, it basically induced lower levels of inflammation as indicated by TNF alpha. So, so far it would appear that the at least some of this data for the mice and humans is similar, at least in terms of insulin resistance and inflammation. So what about disease risk? Um, and actually I should say, what about lifespan, right? Ideally we'd want to have dietary intake of age products, whether it's CML, methylglooxal, or, or others, and uh, you know what's their association with longevity? But clearly that's a very difficult study to do. We would need decades of, of data on people. It hasn't been done yet. So we can look at uh, dietary intake of age products and their association with disease risk uh, and all-cause mortality risk to uh, you know, uh, provide some more insight on this uh, story. So first, uh, higher, di higher dietary uh, CML content is associated with pancreatic cancer in men and breast cancer in women. So first we're looking at the uh, uh, pancreatic cancer in men data. So uh, we're looking at CML uh, in quintiles. So going from one to five, lowest dietary CML intake is one, highest CML uh, dietary CML intake is five. And we're looking at the uh, fully adjusted model, uh, not partially adjusted with the other hazard ratios at three and four there. So they adjusted for many things, but not everything. We're looking at the fully adjusted model when comparing a low dietary intake of uh, CML with the higher intakes, in this case, the fourth and fifth quintiles, we see a 54% and a 40% increased um, uh, incidence or increased risk of having pancreatic cancer. So higher dietary age, uh, dietary uh, CML intake is associated with a higher uh, pancreatic uh, cancer uh, incidence in men. Now, similar data is obtained for women. So again, we're looking here at uh, quintiles of CML, dietary CML intake. So Q1 is a low dietary intake of uh, CML, the age product CML, and Q5 is a high dietary intake. And similarly, in the fully adjusted model, when compared with Q1, the lowest intake of dietary CML, we can see that highest, the highest two uh, quintiles of, of CML intake, Q4 and Q5, were associated with a 24% and a 30% significant, 24% uh, uh, and 30% increased uh, risk for breast cancer. So having a higher intake of dietary age products, uh, so far not, uh, it's associated with, with worse outcomes. Now all of the data doesn't show that though. In a study uh, published two weeks ago, actually the converse data was reported. So uh, an 11% decreased all-cause mortality risk, ACM risk, for the highest versus the lowest intake of dietary CML was reported in men. They didn't find an association between age product intake with women. Um, so this is opposite, uh, you know, the hypothesis being uh, for dietary age products being uh, bad for health and disease risk because this is this association suggests that dietary age products would be associated with a lower all cause death from all causes uh, risk. So let's have a little bit uh, a, a little deeper look at the that data. So in the previous slide, I showed you data for cancer in men and women. So first, they reported um, dietary intake of, of CML with quartiles this time, Q1 to Q4, so lowest intake of dietary CML, Q1, highest intake, Q4. And for cancer mortality, they didn't see an association, a significant association for cancer mortality with dietary CML intake. Similarly, they didn't see uh, an association between dietary CML intake with CVD mortality. Uh, but they did find a significant association for non-cancer, non-CVD mortality, uh, which is a big box. It could be lots of different things. It could be respiratory diseases. It could be uh, accidents. It could be a lot of different things. But nonetheless, they found a 26% decreased risk of non-cancer, non-CVD mortality in the fully adjusted model um, for uh, in association with dietary uh, age products. Now, this is the only study that's been reported for uh, the association between uh, age products dietary age product intake with all-cause mortality. So more data is definitely needed to, uh, you know, to uh, discern what's the true story. Uh, but so far, based on the cancer data and this one study, I'd suggest, and based on the data for the insulin resistance and inflammation story, both in mice and humans, and the animal data showing, uh, you know, the effects of age products on lifespan, I'd suggest that there's more than enough data to support the hypothesis that reducing dietary age products uh, may be an important strategy to improve health and potentially uh, uh, lifespan in people. All right, that's all I've got. You can find me lots of places online. Have a great day.